Hi there, and Simon Weston here with you again. Today we're going to look at some impact positions, try to dispel a few myths and rumours about what impact really is and, and what it's not, and uh, a lot of confusion out there as to what's going on when the club hits the ball. Now we've got a couple of good videos to look at. We've actually got Jack Nicholas as our uh, pupil today. Jack did a few things in his swing that weren't common for the day and not so common these days, but still a great example of how to strike a golf ball. Now, one of the differences that Jack always did was he played the ball up inside of his left heel. Now, he's using a fairly short club, looks perhaps an 8 or maybe a 9 iron in this swing. Jack would play the ball from the same position with all of his clubs. He would just make his stance narrow for the short clubs and, and wider for the long clubs. He had to have a consistent ball position. Not commonly taught, not commonly done, but certainly can work pretty well. What we've got here is the ball placed nicely on the ground on this white line, so we know where the ball started from, from, from two angles, in fact. And what we'll do is we'll just talk about a few concepts. The first one is a lot of people are under the impression that the golf club or the head of the club should be swinging towards the target or down the line or chasing towards the ball, whatever you want to want to say. So let's first of all, let's look at if that's really happening. And you'll notice as Jack starts his back swing, the club moves up from the ground, moves inside of the golf ball. Now, you've got to remember that the golf club is obviously designed with a lie angle, which is the angle of the shaft relative to the sole of the club. Now, if you had a vertical shaft and a 90 degree lie angle, well then you'd have no problem making a, a straight back and through swing. But even a putter is not designed like that. There, is a, there isn't a lie angle in all of your golf clubs. So because you're holding on to the club and because you're standing over to the side of the golf ball, when that thing starts to move, because it's on the ground, it's going to move up in the air. Because you're staying to the side of the ball and, the, and there's a lie angle involved, the club's going to move in an arc. Now, you can try and manipulate the club to go straight back from the ball and use some hand action and wrist action, but all that's going to do is get your club into a bad position so that you see here, Jack, is pretty standard takeaway. Club moves up in the air, moves in behind the ball. I like where Jack's club face is here. This is a nice position with the toe over from the heel. Now, we can't see the top half of his body here, unfortunately, but I would describe that as being a very square club face. All right, this video is more to do with downswing and impact, so let's just get the, get the backswing done. We can't really see it anywhere at the top of his swing. So the thing to look for here is he's coming down to hit this golf ball. You'll notice on the right hand side that there's evidence of the lower body moving to the left. Now, people think you just turn your hips, well it's just not true. The lower body has to move to the left, which, is, which we can see here. So as Jack's approaching the ball in these two videos, let's, let's go ahead and say that his weight, his lower body weight anyway, is favoring his left side. He's not in his right leg, he's not centered. I think we can say pretty safely the evidence of that is right here, how the right foot sort of rolled in onto the ankle. You see here the back of the right foot starting to lift up there. So it's a roll in, not, not the heel lifting off the ground so much, more roll into the ankle and then the foot, the, the heel of the foot comes up. Okay, so the first thing we're, we're trying to discuss is the club approaching from behind the ball, chasing down the line and pushing the ball in a straight line. Now, look where Jack's club head is right here as he's coming down to the ball. Club head still just slightly inside the line. Now, he's now hit the ball. The, the club is now exiting to the left. Now, it, it might look as if the club has moved straight through the ball. Oh, if you're talking about a centimetre, probably almost almost straight but even that tiny distance you know one inch or so that the the club is on the ball the club is actually still moving in an arc now if you break down an arc into a really small piece 
let's say one centimeter or one degree over a, a full circle, it's going to look or appear to be almost straight. Or in actual fact, it is not. The club is continuing on the arc and it's exiting to the left because it comes in from that side and exits to the left. So you see the ball, the golf ball is certainly going nicely down this green line, which I assume where the target is, but the club head is not following the golf ball. And nor is the club face staying square. You can you can see here how the toe of that club has gone past the heel. Now, some people think that club face should still be more in in this position where it's more square, but you know that would be a, a disastrous way to hit a golf ball. So there's the first evidence that the club is not following the golf ball. It's not swinging down the line or chasing towards the target. As I've heard it described, it's an arc. It comes from the inside, strikes the ball, and exits back to the left. Jack Nicholas did it. They're all doing it. If you're trying to push the ball in a straight line, you think of how a baseball player would hit a, hit a ball or, or a tennis player would hit a ball. The ball can go towards the target, but the club or the racket or the bat is not following the ball. It's just not important at all. What's important is at impact, the club face is square. What's important, the club's on a nice path, and therefore, with the face being square, the ball will go straight. All right, let's look at the face on view. And you'll see here as Jack's approaching down to hit this golf ball, as we talked about earlier, the weight is favoring the left side. There's more weight over to this side. You'll notice that the shaft is, is still behind his left arm, although we don't see much of his left arm up here. I would say he's still got some, you know, maybe two feet of distance before he reaches the golf ball. But the golf club is still some distance off the ground. Ten or so inches it appears at this point. So his golf club is going to have to be continuing to move down to get to the golf ball. Now not this abruptly, because obviously there's going to be a bit of an arc, it's not a straight line, but it's descending down to the ball. It's not moving level to the ground, it's not moving up. It's, it's still descending. Now we can prove that with when Jack is on the golf ball, the shark is leaning to the left. Left wrist flat, right wrist arched. Classic position here, as you might expect for, for Jack Nicholas. Now if you, if you look at where he started from, with his hands and shaft originally in this position, and as all the good players do, they move into a different position to hit the golf ball. Right there, that forward shaft lean, very important. If you take a close look, Jack's golf ball has already left the ground and already left his club face. So he's, he's hit the ball, the ball is separated from the golf club. Now, anything we do after this is not going to affect the ball. The ball is already gone. The ball is not going to be affected by what happens next. But if you understand what does happen next, it'll, it'll help you understand what's going on a little more, a little more closely. So there is his golf ball, right? Ball's moved. The ball's moved in the air and moved forward, right? The golf club continues on that downward trajectory towards the ground. Eventually, it will strike the ground and make a divot. And if you look at the, the back of Jack's divot, it's here, and the front is, is here. Now, Jack was never too steep through impact, but there's definitely evidence there of a downward descending impact where the low point has to be in front of the golf ball. That means it's ball and then ground. Right? So if you're seeing that divot in front of the golf ball, and you can even see it from the, on the left here, where that divot is in front of that white line, and the ball's in the air and then there's a divot. Good players don't think about making divots. Good players make divots because of their swing. What I see the average player struggling with is not making any divot, or if they do, the divot starts behind the ball, and that's obviously a real problem. And that essentially often comes from early release of the left wrist, hands being behind the ball, the weight being too far back. There's a number of issues that can cause that, but forward shaft lean and a, a 
bent right wrist at impact with a flat left wrist, descending angle of, of approach, ball, ground, and then the club starts to move up. So there we have it. Now that is, of course, is Jack Nicholas, the, the greatest player of all time, but people, all the good players are doing that. And if you're not making divots in front of the golf ball, or if you're making divots behind the ball or no divot at all, something's wrong, something's going on. You need, we need to get that looked at and, and get it fixed. Well, I hope, I hope that video has cleared up a few of your uh, misunderstandings of what impact is and what impact is not. And uh, all the best to you. Thank you.